Okay, well, for this week's project, I was trying to think of what to do, and one of my friends suggested candle making. And I've picked up a couple tricks over the years, mostly from my mom. And it was like, hey, yeah, why not share this stuff? So, um, hope you enjoyed the video. And like always, please be responsible with candles. They are fire. Nobody wants to lose their house. For this project, you will need some form of weight, a crocheting needle, crocheting thread 100% cotton, scissors, some form of wax, brand new or an old candle will do as long as it's not soy, water, some form of container with a metal bottom and a wax lining, a coffee can, and a small pot. Let's start off this video by playing with fire and lighting up the stove responsibly. Only do this if you're obliged to use the stove. Once this is done, you're going to put your pot on top with some water in it, about a quarter of the way full, and then you're going to take a coffee can and place your coffee can within the water. This creates a double boiler so your wax won't burn while it's melting. While the wax is melting, we're going to go ahead and make your wicks. Well, I'm going to start off by crocheting the main part of the wick, the part that you light on fire. And this is going to be started off with making a slip knot and some very fine thread. You can find this in the crocheting department of the vast majority of craft stores. And you're going to want 100% cotton once again, and a very fine crocheting needle. Just slip it onto the crocheting needle and do a regular chain stitch until it's about 3 inches longer than your mold. You're going to want three inches so you can tie a knot in the end at the weight end and still have about an inch or so extra on the other end. As far as traditional molds, I was never shown how to use them. Growing up, I was always told to use Pringle cans or oatmeal cans. I have a preference for the Pringle cans because they're great for single wick candles. However, as long as the can has a wax lining, you can use it. However, if you're going to use something like an oatmeal can, you're going to want to use three wicks for it. These are a bit more difficult to make, and I normally avoid them. You can also use nut cans, however, the candles always have to be shorter with these. And once again, you have three wicks, and removing the tin from the top can be very difficult. At this point, you're going to want to grab your weight. Now, the weight can be anything you want, as long as it doesn't set on fire. I wouldn't suggest anything plastic, such as buttons. However, I have seen people use them before. I'm going to be using a bottle cap myself. The point of the weight is to hold the wick in place while you're pouring the wax into the mold. So you're going to want something heavy, sturdy, with a flat bottom. And for attaching it, just tie it onto the end of your wick. Once the wick is assembled, you're going to want to go into your wax, make sure that it's all melted, and dip the wick into the wax. This makes it so it stands straighter and it's a lot easier to use when you're making your candles. Once your wick is dry, you're going to want to center it within your mold. If you're using a store-bought mold, they should have instructions on how to do this. However, if you're using a can like me, you're going to want to take your wick, wrap it around some form of stick, like the crochet hook I'm using here. You are then going to take the wick and wrap it around the stick until the weight just skirts the bottom. This will make it so the wick is even throughout the candle. Once you're happy with the centering of your wick, you're going to take your wax and pour it into the mold. For this candle, I'm going to be dropping chunks of wax from an old candle into it. This will cause an ombre effect within the candle. Once all your wax is poured, you're going to want to let it cool. Once the candle is cool, and only when it's cool, pull apart the container. Once the candle is removed from its mold, all you have to do is trim the wick, and then light the wick on fire, and there you go! You got a perfectly working candle! I hope you had fun watching this, and I hope that you try candle making someday. It's a fun project. I'd try it out.